Hi, I'm E.D. Lewis, and happy summer. Uh, so, yeah, this is technically my first review, well, I guess it is the first review of summer, and I've decided to title all my summer videos, um, you know, Summer Spooks. So, it's, you know, any horror video that I'm doing during summer until we reach autumn in late September are going to have the subtitle of Summer Spooks. So, um, I was going through a couple different names, but, um, I decided upon that one. Summer Spooks is not an event, but it's just kind of a theme. Kind of like Summerween is a theme. So, um, though also, that's also an event though. Uh, but this is, uh, not an event, so this is kind of like when I did Halloween, which I'm hoping to do again next year, but it just depends if I get any Halloween reads read early enough and depends on if there's gothic arts going on. Um, I might be able to work that in and get some more spooky ones for Halloween. I'm not sure. Anyway, you know, that's the future. Let's not think about that right now. Uh, so today I'm doing two reviews. One of them is a gothic horror, gothic romance. It would actually kind of work for, for Halloween, actually. Um, and the other is a gothic romance and kind of gothic romance-ish, but we'll get to that. So, um, you know what? Let's go ahead and start with the other one. So I'm gonna do them in the order that I read them in, or, or listened in this case. So the first one is my uh, latest Victoria Holt novel read. Now these reads that I'm doing for Summer Spooks are not necessarily books I've read during summer, but ones that I'm, you know, haven't reviewed yet or are, or, I am reading them during summer. It's just, you know, it's the horror theme videos that are going on during summer. Uh, so both these books I read in the same month or listen to. Um, we can't ask the same thing on this channel. Um, one of them was a little bit earlier in the month of March and one of them was in the later part of March when I was on my little hiatus. So this first one is my latest Victoria Holt novel and I have not read one or listened to one since. And to be honest, I don't know if I'm going to read another one for the rest of the year. It just all depends. I do have an idea of which one I'd probably end up reading. But again, I don't know, so I'm leaving it up in the air. Um, so this one is The Devil on Horseback uh, by Victoria Holt, of course. And it was published originally in 1977. This is one of her later gothics. And... Um, it's not the worst one I've read by far, but it is one of my lesser favorites, I'll say, but I did not dislike it. It just was a tad disappointing to me, but it was still quite enjoyable. It's about a girl named Manila, or as she's called by her best friend, Margot uh, Minel. Um, and she's the daughter of a, the headmistress of a school that is on Durham, the grounds of Durham Manor. Um, it's owned by the family that lives there, and um, she's, you know, basically training to become a teacher herself under her mother, and uh, some unfortunate circumstances end up happening. But before that, she's invited to a party, um, a gathering, and then a party at Durnham Manor, and she meets Joel, uh, and Joel is this, you know, he's the heir to the family fortune. He's very handsome, charismatic. They hit it off as friends immediately. But on her first venture to Durnham Manor, she ends up during a uh, game of hide and seek by her friend Margot, um, whose father is a count, by the way, from France. Um, they end up, you know, playing this game of hide and seek, and she ends up stumbling into a guest room, and it turns out to be the game, the Count's uh, bedchamber. He catches her, and um, he's rather suggestive to her and stuff, and kind of teases her a bit, and he has this reputation about him, and she has silently, you know, in her mind, nicknamed him the Devil on Horseback. Later in the book, she does find out that others from, you know, in France even nickname him the Devil on Horseback. So tragedy ends up striking, and she becomes orphaned, and um, the family at Durnham Manor are not so keen about her sticking around, and uh, her friend Marco ends up in a very compromising situation and has to be sent off, so she goes off with her um, 
if you can read between the lines, you might know what I'm talking about. Uh, she has to go away for a while, and then she eventually, um, she has to masquerade as, as Margot's cousin, as her English cousin. And eventually she ends up getting to visit the Count's home and stuff, and she has to continue her masquerade as the cousin, uh, though the Count and Countess and Margot, of course, know the truth. And this one is kind of different for the gothic genre because it takes place during the Georgian era and it's during the uh, very early stages of the French Revolution and things start to get really tense and then tragedy strikes again. The Count's wife is dead and there's this big question of how did she die since she died so mysteriously and was it an accident or was it on purpose? So, uh, yeah, uh, it was quite a good one. It had some uh, nice, really tense moments, and it was a it was an interesting story. Uh, now, when I say gothic-ish, I mean it's still considered to be a gothic novel, but it's one of her lesser gothics. And what I mean by that, in this case anyway, is that there's not a lot of gothic elements to it. There's a few little gothic kind of moments and little touches here and there, but for the most part, it's not very gothic-y. It's more of a historical romance. And there is a, a kind of a friendship and budding romance that happens between Manel and uh, the Count. Um, and, uh, yeah, and, and, and you have this huge question of, did the Count murder his wife or not? and you'll just have to read it or listen to it. I listened to an Audible because I had Audible, um, well, I still do, had an Audible uh, subscription and it is free on there so you can check it out or you can check it out other ways too. There's paperback and hardback. I don't know if it's currently in reprint, reprint though, but uh, you can obtain an old copy through you know various means. Um, I gave this one four stars like I said, it doesn't have a lot of gothic elements, but it wasn't a terrible read either. Um, not my favorite. It would be my second to least favorite. It's definitely better, in my opinion, than The Legend of the Seven, uh, Seventh Virgin, which was a very gothic tale, but was just uh, unfortunate. The, character, the main character of that one just kind of ruined the book for me personally. Uh, but... They both have great, this one and that one both ha are written really well because Victoria Hall definitely has a way with words and excellent writing style. Uh, but this one I definitely enjoyed much better, but it's not my favorite. I would say that Shadow of the Lynx I like them, you know, better than this one. And um, by just a little bit, and it's one of those that doesn't have quite as many gothic themes, but more than this one for sure. Uh, do check this one out, it's worth it. All right, let's move on to our next one, and that is my second Darcy Coates book that I've ever read, but it was the first physical, and I think the only physical one I bought, I think this was the second one I bought ever. All my other ones are all digital books, uh, e-books, uh, except for this one. And um, this one actually came recommended from Elizabeth Sagewood. that has been sitting on my shelf forever and ever, and then she read it earlier this year. She really enjoyed it. So I'm like, well, if Elizabeth enjoyed it, then it's got to be good. And so I went ahead and picked it up and read it in the later part of March. And I'm going to go ahead and say this right now. I really enjoyed it. Um, it is a gothic romance as well as gothic horror. So it's kind of romantic horror. But it's about a girl named Sophie whose family uh, suffers an immediate disaster uh, financially, and this man, Mr. Argenton, swoops in from almost nowhere. She only recently had met him, and he offers her uh, a marriage proposal. She thinks he's very attractive and stuff, but they've only just met, but she feels like she's got to take it to save her family. So she takes it, and they marry, and uh, their wedding night is rather unusual because he doesn't stay with her and they don't have the traditional wedding night. Uh, it's spent traveling, 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 and she's pretty much by herself, like, most of that time. And he rides ahead of her uh, to get back to their estate. And their estate is, like, in the middle of nowhere. 
Uh, recently I read a book, and I think it was for the Haunted Victorian. Yeah, it was the last one for the Haunted Victorian uh, book club that we read for last month. And it had a house that was, a, it was another gothic romance. And it, uh, it was a house that was like in the middle of nowhere. It was away from like pretty much everything. But I think this house is even further away from civilization. So they go to his ancestral home. And, um, yeah, things are not quite right. Uh, he, sh there's a little bit of family. There's not that many servants. So she meets, uh, his aunt and his uncle and his cousin, Elise. And Elise is a little different. She's got some, she's got some things going on with her that are kind of disturbing. She ends up drawing, she draws these horrific pictures. She's obsessed with them. And she, she's a very melancholy child, uh, which is nothing wrong with that. But there's something about this house that's just off-putting. There's pianos playing in the night. Uh, Rose, uh, her husband's aunt, is very overbearing and very sinister. And Elise has these uh, fits. And the pictures she draws are really terrifying of this, this shadowy creature. And... Um, it's a very off-putting novel. It's not perfect by any means, but it's quite enjoyable. And there are some things that don't really make sense in the beginning, but and I've, saw, I've seen this in some reviews that people remarked on, like, it doesn't make sense. Well, it does make sense by the end of the book because that stuff is explained. There are some things that seem rather convenient, like the marriage thing, but there is a reason for it, and it, ex and it is explained later in the book. So um, it's part of the mystery. Uh, so, um, but yeah, I greatly enjoyed it. I would recommend it. There is a part two to this because it's a duology. I do have part two. It will be going up in a video at some point, uh, a little book haul, because I got it more recently than my last book haul where I did a whole bunch of those books. I didn't talk about my most recent ones. It was one of my more recent ones. So I do have part two of this, which is called House of Secrets. Did I never say the title of this book? This book is called House of Shadows, by the way. I'll flash it on the screen earlier with a picture of the book. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's an interesting book. It has an interesting concept. It's one I haven't quite seen before of kind of the haunted house trope. Kind of like uh, her previous book I'd read, Craven Manor, that it was the haunt. It's the haunted house trope. It's another gothic horror. It's not gothic romance, though. There's nothing romance about it. Um, But it was another one that, it, it, it's uh, a different take on the haunted house. And that one I thought was really good. Uh, I don't remember what I rated it, so I don't know which one I actually liked better. I think I liked Craven Manor better, but I did really enjoy this. So I'm hoping to get to part two sometime this year. I had debated about waiting to review this till I read part two, but then if I don't read part two this year for whatever reason, I hate to put it off. While it's still relatively fresh, I did have to remind myself on some character names. And there's a few little things I did have a little trouble trying to explain, like the thing with Elise, um, without spoiling it. Because, let me just say this, Elise is being influenced by the thing going on in the house. That's what the thing with Elise is. And it's just hard to explain it without spoiling it. So, um, but yeah. Uh, greatly enjoyed this book. It's excellent. Um, like I said, four stars. Uh, do check it out. I'm hoping to get to part two soon. Um, but yeah. Uh, so that was my first video for my, um, Summer Spooks. And I will have another review coming up next Saturday. We'll be in July. And who knows, we might technically be in spooky season if the uh, spooky season powers that be decide spooky season starts on July 5th again this year, then, you know, it'll be technically spooky season again. But who knows? We'll see. Uh, but it'll be a video I actually pre-recorded back in February, I think, or early March. So, um, I'm finally going to put that one out. So that'll be my next one in my summer spooks, uh, series. And yeah, I would say it's even kind of summery because it's a book that takes place, I think, during kind of summery times, or at least a kind of a, a warm location. So, uh, anyway, 
Until next time, stay safe, stay spooky, and I hope everybody is enjoying their summer and has had a great Pride Month. So until next time, bye-bye.